Hello everybody, um, thank you for tuning in. Before we start this video, I need to leave a little disclaimer. Um, what you're going to see in this video, there's going to be a little change in our pictograph, um, which you see on your screen. Okay, so I've been praying and communing with the Holy Spirit, and He, he tells me that He does lead people who are watching these videos. So, um, but the video we covered yesterday, we understand that material existence will be redeemed and will dissolve into the spiritual. So what we see here on your chart is actually eventually subject to change. So in the future, we really have no idea what God is going to do with our existence because he's going to redeem all of this. So the reason why I'm making this disclaimer, I originally had the kingdom of God all the way up on the top. And um, as I've been meditating and studying a little bit more, I realized that's not necessarily true. It could be true because honestly, we really don't know. But um, the kingdom of God can be activated indefinitely in the material existence. Uh, we read about that in the scriptures, specifically the sealed Book of Mormon, chapter 45, um, in the celestial. And in the celestial is still material existence. And we will still be, at, and we will be as gods then. So that would be the kingdom of God, okay? Um, we are already in the kingdom of heaven. Um, so, so again, you're going to see a little bit of a change on the pictograph. Um, you know, these things are subject to change. As I said before, these things are going to get redeemed. So we really don't know. So we're just doing the best we can. And I just ask you to pray for the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth. Okay, so now let's continue with the video. So in this video, you're going to need your Nag Hammadi book if you want to follow along. I apologize. That is just the best way I'm able to do these videos. And um, I want to focus on the section, The Father and the Kingless Generation. Okay, and I really just want to plant seeds of knowledge in the people, open the doorway to understanding. If you're not caught up, if you can't really digest this stuff, I just recommend keep it on the shelf of your mind. And if you're interested while you continue your studies in the Nag Hammadi scriptures, in time, this stuff will piece together. Okay, so be patient. Um, you know, you have to love the truth in order to receive it, in order to get it. So, um, okay. So we are on page 290, and uh, we are in the text, The Wisdom of Jesus Christ. So the last video, we talked about how uh, when we see in these texts that uh, Mary said to Christ, or Andrew said to Christ, um, Matthew said to Christ, or asked him something, that the revelation of those persons are, would be the key to understanding the mystery of what we're reading about. So in this instance, um, Mary of Magdala is asking Christ um, about this stuff, and he's really giving her revelation about her own walk, about her own life, really essentially about the daughter of Zion and about the future church. So what we're covering here is amazing because the kingless generation is the top of the top, man. It is um, the highest we possibly get that, that I can even perceive at least in the Nag Hammadi scriptures. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. I'm going to share what I know. Um, so, and with the pictograph, we should be able to slowly digest this stuff. And again, I just ask you to pray about it because I have personal revelation that I'm just going to have to ask you to pray about. Um, so, okay, yesterday we covered this, okay? Um, that material existence um, will dissolve and be redeemed. Anything not of God will be thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, so... When Mary of Magdala asks Christ this, he actually gives her, you know, the plight of her life, right? The plight of her walk, the plight of the walk of daughter of the daughter of Zion. And really, the daughter of Zion isn't really just about the sexually traumatized and the afflicted. Uh, we are all the daughter of Zion coming out of darkness, coming into maleness. So it's a very complex, deep topic, as the scriptures always prove to be. So um here we have um christ giving mary um the revelation of her walk okay so now if you have read the sealed portion of the book of mormon chapter 45 i highly recommend that the pdf is available online um 
We understand that Mary of Magdala, the revelation of Mary of Magdala is the redemption of our souls. And again, we covered this yesterday. If you want to understand the redemption of our souls in the Nag Hammadi scriptures, we go to the exogenesis of the soul. Okay? So I'll leave this in the description box below. So we know that Rebecca uh, stands for the individual daughters of Zion. Uh, Mary of Magdala, meaning their rebellion, is the collective daughters of Zion. The Tower of Magdala is meant to bring in the church, and the church eventually is meant to bring in the seed of Seth, which will be, which is meant to raise up to the kingless generation. So we're talking about the end game as far as the scriptures really go. That this is what I could receive. So this is like the top of the top of the top of the top. Okay, so it's really amazing. A kingless generation. Okay, so we're moving on to the pictograph. Here we are. You'll see the, little, the slight revision that the kingless generation, or at least in the context that we're talking about in this video, um, this would be accurate. Okay, so we're going to look at this uh, section on page 290 in the book. I ask you to read along with me if you're interested in this study. I'm going to walk you through this. It does require a little bit. I am going to share some personal revelation that is not in the scriptures. Of course, you know, may the Holy Spirit lead you into all truth. But I think um, this section should be pretty digestible um, with this pictograph. Or at least we could understand the nature of our forefather. Um, so, which is really amazing. So I'm on the second paragraph of the father and the kingless generation. Okay, the Lord of the universe is addressed not as father, but as forefather. Okay, so this first sentence we could clearly understand from this pictograph, right? The Lord of the universe is our heavenly father, the father of material existence. Okay, okay, so the father is the beginning of those who will appear, but the Lord is the forefather without a beginning. Right? So if you're familiar with the story of our Heavenly Father, Sobeos being redeemed from his father Yaldobeos and becoming our Heavenly Father, we read this on in the origin of the world, we can understand this sentence. Our Heavenly Father is the beginning of those who will appear. Why? Because he is the Heavenly Father of material existence. But the Lord is the forefather without a beginning. Okay? So Though the forefather rules over our heavenly father, they are still one. They, they became one when uh, Sabaoth repented. Okay? All right, so let's continue. And remember, this is just basic understanding, guys. It does get a lot more complicated. We're not even going to open that can of worms. So when the forefather saw himself within himself in a mirror, his resemblance appeared there. Okay. So our forefather saw himself within himself in a mirror. We could read about this in other texts. I highly recommend you just put this on the shelf for your mind. And when you continue um, diving into Nag Hammadi scriptures, you'll find this confirmed over and over and over again, and you'll start piecing the pieces together. So how can we apply this in our life today? Okay, we're talking about the forefather, the ineffable forefather. It says, when the forefather saw himself within himself in a mirror his resemblance appeared there okay so i think many of us are aware of the quantum shifts happening today um you know one day a new version of a person will emerge or someone's free will choice never happened it'll be something different so from my understanding every single person infinite free will option is already materialized out um, within God. So, for example, what I'm trying to get at is that the forefather is described as a mirror inside a mirror. So this is how we see these infinite quantum realities. And he could just switch them and redeem them according to his perfect will. So, um, we could start to make sense of that if we understand the quantum stuff that we're going through. It could, we could start to conceive that, what's going on in the ineffable. And of course, the ineffable is inconceivable. So, when the forefather saw himself within himself in a mirror, 
His resemblance appeared there, but his image appeared as the Divine Father. So, the ineffable forefather is like a mirror looking at a mirror, okay? Infinite, okay? And that, that image is his resemblance. But his actual image is the image of our Heavenly Father down below. We are made in the image of God. And the text continues to confirm this when you read this, that our, the image of our Heavenly Father is an androgynous human being, the very first human being. And the name of our Heavenly Father was actually Adam. As um, later on in the text, we could, you could learn that if you continue reading. Okay, so that's how we make sense of that sentence. Okay, so let's go over it again. Um, when the forefather saw himself within himself in a mirror, his resemblance appeared there, but his image appeared as the divine father by himself and the reflection above reflections and the first existing unconceived father. Okay, so our forefather is a mirror inside a mirror and that equals his resemblance, but his actual image came down as the heavenly father. Okay, and that we learn later to simplify is an androgynous, the first human being named Adam. Okay, so let's continue reading. And yes, there are reflections because, you know, you have to understand this pictograph is just a basic, basic understanding. Our Heavenly Father is down below, is divided into twos and spread out into fours. There are copies of copies of copies, shadows of shadows of shadows. It's insane. It's really hard to conceive. So that's how we can make sense of these sentences, okay? Okay, so let's continue. Um, we're talking about our Heavenly Father. He is, old as, he is as old as the light before Him, but not as powerful, okay? Because, why? Because this is the oneness of Allah. Our Heavenly Father, when He became redeemed, became one with the ineffable forefather, okay? So they became one. So He is as old as the light before Him, but not as powerful, okay? Crazy stuff, okay? Us as material human beings shouldn't even be talking about this stuff. It'll blow, it'll make your heart melt if you can even conceive it. By the grace of God though, he enables it. Okay, so afterward, there was a revealed a multitude of beings just as old and powerful who are self-conceived and reflective, all right? Now this is where we get what we're talking about. Okay, so these shadows that you see on the top right hand of your screen. Afterward, there was revealed a multitude of beings, just as old as the forefather, but not as powerful, who are self-conceived and reflective. So what this means is, these multitude of beings has always existed with the infinite forefather, but when the father um, was redeemed that our heavenly father was redeemed below and became one with the forefather these um, beings became uh, Revealed themselves. So they became known then even though they already inf infinitely existed. Okay Now these beings now what why is Christ talking about this with Mary Magdalene? And this is the revelation because these beings are the source of our souls Okay um, Okay, so we talked about how Kurt Cobain has the same type of soul as, as Christ. Um, I've seen it in, in our patriarch Joshua. I've seen it in, you know, it's in so many musicians, so many artists. Um, you know, Howard Stern has the same soul, you know, because I've seen these type of people. I have that same soul. Um, so, if I could zoom in so what you see on your screen is actually a drawing from Kurt Cobain and I believe this is where our souls come from these are the angels that create our souls and they come from there and there are different sects and there are, and there are a multitude of these angels or be, they're called beings I think they're just above angels they're just infinite beings that create our souls okay so th we're talking about the creation of where our souls come from. We have soulmates. We have people who are like us. We have people who are different from us. It is infinite, okay? So this is actually a drawing of Kurt Cobain of these little Kovacs where I believe 
our souls and the different sect of our souls. We have people who are not like us, yet like us, and it divides off into infinite divisions and all that kind of stuff, okay? So this is what we're talking about here, okay? And it makes sense, you know, if you understand the revelation of Mary Magdalene, why Christ is telling us to her. Um, so this is amazing. So, and the whole multitude of beings, oh, excuse me. Okay. So afterward, there was revealed a multitude of beings just as old and powerful who were self-conceived and reflective. Okay. Glorious and without number, their generation is designated the generation over whom there is no kingdom. Okay, so that is us rising up to the kingless generation. Okay, way, way, way ahead of time, guys. This is way after time. This is so far into the future, okay? You yourselves have appeared from the people of this generation, right? God chose us from the foundation of the world, okay? So we read about, you know, Jeremiah chapter 1, I chose you before you were in your womb. And there are older souls and there are younger souls. Now, those who have older souls, that's who I believe we're talking about in the text. And they have to suffer for the rest of humanity. They are meant to lift other people up. It's not that people, you know, souls are better than other souls. But this is a whole other topic to begin with. But um, this is God's perfect loving order so that we need each other in order to grow. Okay? But um, a lot of our matriarchs and, um, you know, like, like what God says to Jeremiah says it's because they're from these eldest souls. And, and that means they have to suffer for everybody. That means they have the hardest time in life. So, um, so it's interesting. So like, you know, Satan loves seed lines. They try to or outdo God by seed lines, but you can't outdo God by seed lines because God will always raise up somebody like a David who is, you know, born in sin and, and all this kind of stuff, born, it, we just see it all the time. You can't stop the all. You can't stop the ineffable father. He, he drops a soul in a body how he chooses as the book of job says god destroys the perfect you can't you know the seed line thing is a pipe dream it'll never happen god will always ruin it for everybody so um so that's what we're talking about okay um uh, we could specifically read about this doctrine in the gospel uh in the revelation of peter in the nag Hammadi scriptures okay so you yourselves have appeared from the people of that of this generation okay maybe he's also talking about going back in time you know, who knows? And the whole multitude of beings with no kingdom over them is designated the children of the unconceived father. Okay, this is exactly what we see on the pictograph, the kingless generation. God, Savior, Son of God, whose likeness is among you, which we already covered. This is the unknowable one. Now, the forefather is the unknowable one, who is full of imperishable glory and ineffable joy. And all these beings are at rest in him, constantly rejoicing in ineffable joy and the Father's unfading glory and unending praise that has never heard or known among the aeons and their worlds yeah. until now. So we pretty much walk through this. Um, it makes perfect sense why Allah would be, uh, why Christ would be talking about this to Mary of Magdalene because her revelation is the redemption of our souls. And he's talking about the very genesis of our souls and all the alpha and omega story of our souls. The beginning and the end. As we covered in the last video, everything will return to its root. So with that, so we can understand, you know, with this information, um, I believe people could start to digest this passage. It's quite, quite amazing. So, um, yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I pray this is a blessing. I'll bless you.